Uh, to the Downtown Connector uh, final uh, review of our project that has gotten started, got started yesterday. Uh, you may have noticed uh, out there that we had some saw cutting uh, on Alder Street, moving from 1st uh, up to 7th, and that will continue uh, over the next couple of days, uh, moving up the hill. So I uh, just wanted to start off by thanking all of our elected officials that are here tonight. Uh, we have got Mayor Bob Rogers here tonight, uh, Deputy Mayor Deidre Peterson, Council Member Kathy McDowell, Council Member Kevin Dorsey, uh, Council Member Eric Anisco, I almost missed you. Uh, did I miss anybody else? No? Um, but. Without them, uh, we couldn't do these projects, these great projects that we actually moved forward with uh, last year uh, on design and uh, ultimately rolled out the project, like I said, uh, that got started yesterday. So the way we're going to uh, proceed through this tonight is if you do have any questions slide by slide, uh, certainly feel free to raise those. We're not going to wait until the end. Uh, we would rather address them as we kind of go along uh, through the presentation uh, and catch those as we go along. So I will get started. Um, with me tonight, uh, Senior Associate Engineer Logan Brady. He has been the main uh, employee on this uh, as far as design goes. He has been driving the ship on this project uh, for the most part with uh, the assistance of Cobry Schneidmiller our associate engineer uh, for the city of Shelton. So first thing uh, is funding. We have been having, uh, as I think most of you know, uh, some budget issues uh, in the city of Shelton at this point. Uh, and one thing I did want to point out is this project is 100% uh, grant funded. Originally it was not. Originally it was 70% funded with 30% coming from the partners of the city of Shelton, uh, Mason County PUD, uh, Mason Transit Authority, and Mason Conservation District. But there was still about a million dollars that the city was going to have to put forward uh, on this project. And that was not coming out of the general fund. So I have had quite a few comments uh, come from citizens, uh, not only of uh, the city of Shelton, but also of Mason County that have contacted me and said, maybe you should tune back these projects a little bit, or maybe just not do them at all uh, with your budget concerns that you have. With this, uh, the transportation benefit dollars, uh, also real estate excise tax, and also traffic impact fees. So basically a big project comes in, well, it doesn't have to be a big project, could be a single family residence, all the way up to a major hospital renovation or a school uh, that pays traffic impact fees. Those are restricted dollars, can't be used for anything else but transportation projects. Um, so when we look at the overall budget and we could say, yeah, let's use those dollars for a police officer. That is not legal for us to do. So we have to use those dollars for transportation projects. So originally we had about a million dollars of city funds, uh, either TBD, uh, REIT money, or TIF going into this project. And then right at the last minute, uh, our elected officials at the state level uh, came through with a million dollar uh, state appropriation to fill the gap. So we actually do not have any city funds going into this project, uh, except for uh, a portion of our storm. Uh, and we'll get into that a little more uh, as we get through this uh, presentation uh, and quite a few storm upgrades to this area. At this time, I'm going to pass it over to Logan Brady uh, and Cobra. They're going to discuss the timeline and how we're going to address the traffic control issues uh, with a lot of construction out there with not only uh, this project, but also Basin 3. Yeah, so uh, I'm sure you've already seen Basin 3 construction going. Uh, the good news is uh, Pavetta Brothers and Warren's Construction, the, the two contractors doing both these projects are going to share a traffic control. Uh, so it's going to be the same flaggers. 
they will be uh, doing their road closures in coordination. So say we don't have North Cliff and Olympic Highway North closed at the same time. So we'll be able to detour uh, and be forward thinking and smart about how we do it. Um, launch construction beginning immediately after Forest Festival. We'll be moving the Jersey barriers on Olympic Highway North and re-channelizing so that they can begin milling the asphalt. Um, there will still be two lanes of traffic, one going up, one going down Olympic Highway North. Uh, pedestrian traffic on Olympic Highway North will be closed basically immediately. Um, the uh, pedestrian path will be ground up uh, and it'll probably be about a month and a half before it's actually placed um, back and, and in usable condition. Um, so likely there will not be pedestrian traffic throughout the summer on Olympic Highway North. Um, downtown, the uh, 8th Street will be closed effective basically immediately. Uh, there will be a rain garden that will be installed towards the end of the project and 8th Street will not reopen. Um, that will remain closed uh, for that turn. Um, also on the uh, roundabout, that will likely come towards the end of the project. Um, they might do the first overlay of that area towards the end of the summer. Probably have a uh, construction shutdown during the winter because we can't pave in that weather. Uh, and then it'll finish up uh, beginning in the spring next year. I didn't see anybody's jaw drop when Logan mentioned a roundabout, so everybody must know it's already coming. So. <laughs> Um, when Logan mentioned the Jersey barriers, I don't know if everybody is familiar with what a Jersey barrier is. He mentioned we're going to slide those over. So those are the concrete barriers right now that protect the walking path. So they are just going to slide those over into the lane of travel uh, to separate those up and downhill lanes. Uh, right now you've got three lanes. They're going to reduce, reduce it down to two uh, so that they can work in one of those lanes and be protected. Uh, so that's what they are looking at. So we have uh, designated a couple of alternative uh, walking paths for downtown since we are going to be closing down that walking path. If you'll see, this area here is at the end of Birch Street. So up on Mountain View, there is a trail. It's not uh, ADA accessible. It is a little rough, uh, but it is away from Mountain View downtown. So it comes out at the end of 8th Street, basically right behind the library, and comes out up at 10th and Birch Street. So the high school water tank uh, would be the top of that uh, trailhead. So there is a way to st still navigate that if you are on foot uh, or on a bicycle. You would have to walk the bicycle down this trail. It has quite a few switchbacks, but there is a way through that uh, from Mountain View to downtown. There is also the, uh, help me out, Logan. Teresa Johnson Trail. Thank you. Uh, it is up, starts up by the hospital, up on 13th Street, and it is a pretty good walk uh, down through uh, that area. It is very pretty, so it might take you a little longer, but it also comes out uh, just uh, north of the library, uh, so that would be another way down. And then a much longer route would be to go North Cliff. Uh, and to get downtown. So a couple of other options that uh, pedestrians may use. Can I get a question? Sure. Neither one of those pedestrian paths you mentioned are lighted at all. Um, that is correct. Any solutions for night travel on foot? Uh, not at this point. It is going to be, like Logan had mentioned, the walking path is going to be closed for a while. But uh, at this point, we have not uh, designated a lighted uh, walking path, which right now you don't have one on Olympic Highway North. It, it does have lights on the north side of the road, but nothing actually lighting the walking path. So yeah, you get some residual light on the other side, but yeah, you're, you're, you do have a light at the bottom of 8th Street uh, to light up kind of the trailhead. And there are a few residential uh, luminaires up in the Birch Street entrance but nothing actually on the trail and that was my other question is, is there any is there any thought to security for those who are now on the trail that um, one of the major footpaths from downtown to uptown? so if it is a concern of any citizen walking we would uh we would ask those folks or encourage them to use dial a ride mason transit to get from mountain view to downtown or the opposite 
uh, and not use those pedestrian paths at night if that is a concern of any any pedestrian. Well, I was, I was mostly concerned. Well, that was one of my concerns. But the other concern is for the residents in the area. They're going to see a lot more foot traffic now. Is there any concern about security for the residents in the area at the top of that foot We don't anticipate any. I guess there could be, certainly. Um, but, yeah, we, I guess we don't anticipate our pedestrians being <coughs> criminals necessarily no, and increased either. criminal activity. Um, but, yeah, we certainly, uh, if we do see an issue, we certainly will be. Yeah, but if we do see an increased uh, crime rate, uh, certainly Chief Moody uh, will increase patrols and we will try to address that if we do see that. Um, but it, like I said, it is a fairly short uh, duration. But if we do see that, we will certainly try to adjust patrols and address that issue. Yes? I, I walk the trails and I, there are some characters. <laughs> Yeah, and we do realize that this is not the best case scenario. We are in a construction period and nothing is going to be perfect. Um, but yeah, we have tried to address some of those issues, but there are some that are just out of our control that we can't, uh, we, we can't control ultimately through the construction period. So this is the same design that we had uh, a few months ago when we had the downtown connector uh, open house and we were looking at design options it has not changed much uh, it is still the same this is the road section so this would be the north side of the road uh, up against the hillside so a wedge curb against the, the bank with an 11 foot travel lane a center divider island another 11 foot lane uh, so reducing one of the uphill lanes the swale with a six inch stand-up curb and then a 10 foot multimodal uh, pathway a concrete pathway from basically skip worse all the way to the other end at first street uh, that 10 foot sidewalk will be the entire distance this is just an artist rendering of what the project will look like what it looks like now uh, and what it will look like in the future in that swale area that is where the uh, illumination will be placed uh, up and down this project it will move from the north side of the road over to the south side of the road uh, get rid of the old ugly wooden poles and we will have the same style of pole that is uh, on 13th street and also down on railroad avenue so the black uh, uh, concrete poles will be placed in that swale area on those uh, light poles we also will have uh, the hanging baskets and also a the banner arms for any of the uh, banners that we may place up and down that uh, project so this is working from the top of the hill at C Street at Skipworth and we will go from the top of the hill uh, work all the way back down to first Street uh, at the roundabout so one major change that you will see is right now we have addressed an issue at this point uh, we did have quite a bit of traffic that used to stop here trying to make this less left-hand cross traffic turn with no turn lane so they would plug up traffic, and what we would see is then people try to get into this lane, which also ends right here, uh, to try to get around that. So we tried to address that with a turn lane so that we didn't clog up traffic and it was free flowing through that uh, so that you could make that left-hand turn uh, cross traffic. This is down at the uh, B Street area where you see that uh, big yellow triangle that we had there once before and that will be going away replaced with a smaller uh, little little triangle there that actually blocks off uh, the traffic for making that also that left hand cross traffic turn so you will not be able to come down the hill 
and make that cross traffic turn, you'll have to make that up at C Street. So there will not be an entrance at B Street or A Street. A Street will be blocked off um, with a partial rain garden, some landscaping uh, on A Street. So once you pass C Street, you will not be able to get into uh, that. Will you that. be able to come up the hill and make that turn to the right? Yes, so if you see here, that actually was another uh, change. There is actually a uh, turn lane that you will basically enter into so that you're not uh, plugging up or slowing down this traffic also. So you'll enter into this turn lane and then on to B Street. So you still will be able to make that as you come up the hill. And then this is moving down the hill at A Street. You can see that A Street will be blocked off. And then you'll see back at that other slide, we showed those center divider islands. Those are broken islands as you move up and down uh, the hill section of this project. Um, and it will be have some low, uh, low level, uh, low maintenance uh, landscaping in the center of it. And these are located the entire distance of that project. So what we wanted to do to increase safety was divide the traffic. Uh, and give the opportunity for, or, or not give the opportunity to, to basically have a car wander uh, across this lane, across the center line into the other lane of traffic. The issue that we ended up seeing with this was, uh, I will see if this next one addresses it. So out of this area that would be down in here, there is a small residential neighborhood called Coal Loop um, that was an issue for us that if you see, we blocked off their entrance to not get a cross traffic turn here. They would have to go down the hill and also at the northern entrance, they would also have to go down the hill. So we called up our traffic engineer, uh, Rick Perez. He took a look at this area because we did hear some complaints from the residents up in that coal loop area. And at this point, the residents were looking for this cross traffic turn so they could come out of here and get up onto Mountain View, which was an issue for us. Uh, but we have uh, consulted Rick Perez, our traffic engineer, and his suggestion was to slide this just a, just a little bit to the south so that these cars could coming out of this could make that cross traffic turn uh, and move up the hill section. So we did hear the residents of Coal Loop. So we did make that adjustment, slid that down to the south just a little bit. Those residents still will not be able to come up the hill and stop traffic to make that left-hand turn. And that will be something that uh, Chief Moody and his staff will be checking on and making sure that that is not happening. So, but we did hear you residents in Cold Loop. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh man, and then I just shut it all off. So moving down the hill from there, we get down to 8th Street. Uh, 8th, Street 8th Street will be a bus pull-off. We worked with uh, Mason Transit uh, Authority. They asked for a bus stop someplace downtown. Uh, so we looked at this and actually are blocking off 8th Street. It was a concern of ours. We were trying to figure out uh, how to keep this traffic now that stops in this lane of traffic coming down the hill and if there is any traffic coming up this left hand turn is an issue it ends up blocking up all of the traffic coming down the hill um, so we were trying to figure out a way and then mason transit uh, authority approached us and said we need a bus stop downtown somewhere so figured this would be a great location for a uh, lot of traffic into the library uh, and also downtown so we ended up developing a rain garden that would block off 8th Street, so all the way back to the entrance to the library. Uh, the library entrance, I'll get to you in just a sec. Library entrance will be open uh, on both ends, 8th and 7th. It will just block off the uh, southern end of 8th Street. Yes? Do you have the final design of the rain garden, or is that on? Next slide, I will show you uh, at least an artist's rendering of it. Okay. But yes, we do have a final design. Yes. On the downhill direction, currently MTA stops right there, and they back traffic up halfway up the hill sometimes as they're uploading. Yes, they do. That's a bus stop, but they stop there. 
Yes, we have been working with them. They also have placed some temporary signs out that uh, we were a little surprised by. So we're working on their in-lane stops. Uh, Danette Brannon has been great um, to work with and very uh, accommodating with... with yeah, people were getting out there and running across. Yes, the yep. We tried to fit a bus stop in on the south side of the road and just couldn't quite get it in there. We were very, very close. Uh, but couldn't quite fit it in there. So the in-lane stops are an issue for us, and Danette is working on uh, trying to eliminate most of those. So we're trying to work with them and, and see if we can find a way to get them uh, from those in-lane stops. So coming down from Mountain View, you won't be able to make a left on that side of the library and turn in and You'll have to go to the new traffic signal that's going to be located. Uh, there is an existing traffic signal there. It's getting upgraded, a new traffic signal at 7th Street to turn to the library. Yes. Yeah. So this is the look at the new rain garden. Uh, designed it to not only function for stormwater, but be aesthetically pleasing, something that Somebody could go out and sit uh, out in the, the yard there at the library and enjoy their time. So you'll see uh, multiple uh, basins where the water will come down, fill and spill into the next one and ultimately end up down. Uh, and the reason for that is most of, we're trying to get most of that water to infiltrate into the ground and not be runoff, um, which will also increase the quality of the water that goes into Goldsboro Creek. Um, and be treated before it actually gets there. This area also is a city-owned lot at, at this point, just to the west of 8th Street. Kind of sits up on a little bit of a knoll. We're actually gonna knock down the underbrush that's in there now. Um, we have had some issues with uh, some homeless sleeping in there, so we're trying to kind of clean that up just a little bit. Gonna put a couple of picnic tables up on this little knoll and make it into a small park. Uh, at this point with low maintenance, no grass or anything. It's just going to be mulch on the ground uh, to uh, reduce maintenance. But uh, a small park up here just to the west side of this rain garden also. So should be a pretty good look for 8th Street uh, and closing that off. So moving to, oh, another look at uh, the 8th Street closure. Uh, a little better look at it uh, from 7th Street. And then once you get to 7th Street, the profile of the road changes uh, from the center divider island to an eight-foot sidewalk on the south side, no, sorry, north side of the road uh, with a landscape strip and then a six-inch stand-up curve and then two 12-foot lanes. I believe we've actually reduced those down to 11-foot lanes, haven't we, Logan? Or have we? Yeah, 11. 11-foot lanes? Uh, so 11-foot uh, lanes. And what the objective of narrowing the lanes slightly is uh, traffic calming. We're trying to slow traffic uh, somewhat in that area. Quite a few complaints of the speeds on Alder Street. We have done speed uh, counts or uh, data collection on speeds on not only the Alder Street but Olympic Highway North. So we'll be able to see if we actually accompl accomplish our goal when we finish this project. Uh, which will be interesting. Right now, the speeds on at least the uh, Olympic Highway North uh, area is almost 40 miles an hour on average. So quite a bit over the posted speed limit. So we'll see if we actually uh, reduce speeds up there with that traffic pump. And then that same 10 foot, uh, uh, again, a small planter strip where the illumination will be placed and then a 10 foot multimodal uh, sidewalk uh, extending the entire distance. And this is a artist rendering of a look up and down uh, Alder Street. So one big change that if you're not aware of the change is the elimination of parking on Alder Street at the courthouse. Uh, we have heard quite a few complaints from the county. We have addressed, I believe, to the best of our ability, 
uh, those issues with developing some parking that right now is not available on 4th, 5th, and 6th Street on the north side of Railroad, or on the north side of Alder Street. Uh, actually increased their parking from 21 stalls to 24, Logan, I think is what it was. Yeah. Uh, so from 21 at the courthouse to 24 and actually gave them uh, some ADA uh, stalls also. They've got some non-compliant stalls down there now on the what would be the east side of the courthouse. So actually developing an ADA ramp and some uh, compliant ADA stalls at the courthouse. So increase their parking just slightly. And the reason for that, city code does not allow uh, on-street parking on arterial streets. Uh, it is a code of ours, and uh, we are trying to abide by that code uh, with this project. Yes. It will. Yes. There are in each one of those blocks. There are ADA stalls uh, on Fourth, Fifth, and Sixth ADA ramps to cross Alder Street and also a rapid flasher at 4th uh, for the crossing. Actually, so, the building you're talking about, the ADA stalls will be on the south side of the street. On, by 6th, on 6th street, is that what you're talking about? No. No, different, different building. Okay. The, on the corner there, 7th and Alder. Our building park. Oh, yeah, Logan's right then. Yeah. Yes, they, sorry, wrong building, I was, referencing. I thought you were talking about the one on uh, 5th. But yes, 6th uh, Street will actually have, we have uh, worked with Frank uh, Pinter at the county and also Dave Windham and they are, we are moving those to the south side of Alder Street. So elimination of a couple of trees down there and then uh, new ADA stalls on that side of the road. Uh, they did uh, ask us to move those from the north side to the south side. So and we had plenty of room there to do it with on-street parking existing, just the change of the use of those uh, and then increased parking on the north side. So, yes. So this is a look at what will change on 4th, 5th, and 6th. Right now, um, it's just a very narrow two-lane road with a grass strip uh, between the sidewalk and the actual traveled lane. So that grass strip will go away. This will get all new pavement. Uh, and then the new parking stalls on both the east and the west side of 4th, 5th, and 6th. And then to the big change. So this is what ex is existing down at 1st Street now. Uh, it is the stop sign heading south on Northcliffe. First Street, and then directly into a yield sign with this slip lane uh, that comes through that I'm sure all of us have run into at one time or another. You pull up to that and the person that's supposed to yield doesn't yield, and the other one looks at you like uh, you were supposed to yield, and, and everybody gets confused. So um, originally, when we first rolled this out, we had a uh, four-way stop at this intersection. We heard everybody when they said that that would not work for them. So we went back to the design table, actually worked with WashDOT, a couple of roundabout experts, Brian Walsh and Dennis Swires at WashDOT. And uh, they ended up convincing us to actually put a roundabout in there and that we could fit one in there. So they helped out quite a bit with the design along with our consultant, Gray and Osborne, uh, to actually fit that in there. It is a little, a little bit different just because it is an offset intersection, so we had to make uh, one major change to what is uh, a normal roundabout. Well, two major changes. Uh, that roundabout is fully traversable, so this area here, uh, the first lift on it will be four inches higher than the uh, driving surface, and then the interior of that, uh, the interior 10 feet, will be another four inches higher. So it's not like a normal car is just going to drive through the middle of this, uh, but a large truck uh, may be able to make that turn, could come through and actually make that turn and mount this uh, center uh, island and actually uh, move through that intersection. So it will be a rolled curb. And we actually developed this 
to uh, accommodate uh, what is uh, a WB67, which is a full size what you would see on the freeway, the biggest possible uh, legal vehicle that could uh, go on this roadway uh, would be a WV67 and after running the model we can get a WV67 semi through this intersection. So uh, didn't want to, originally we looked at having uh, some truck routes through Shelton uh, and ultimately thought uh, is that the best uh, use or, or need for this project was to designate who was going to be able to use it and who wasn't going to be able to use it. And frankly, we didn't want to get to a point where uh, we were excluding anybody from using this or, or being able to uh, enjoy this project. So uh, we did make it so that you could uh, get through that with a full-size semi, worked with uh, uh, Sierra Pacific to make sure that they were okay with it and also uh, with all of our first responders, uh, fire, police, and uh, the ambulance. So this is what First Street will look like uh, in the future. So the other big change to that, uh, not with that being uh, fully traversable that you don't normally see, is this lane over here. Uh, normally uh, two lanes in, two lanes out on all four legs. Uh, with this being offset somewhat, this now is a one way uh, into what would be East Alder. So no traffic will be able to come from basically Highway 3 and make this uh, turn into the roundabout. It will be an exit out of the roundabout only. Uh, we had to do that to make sure that uh, we've also got a fairly large uh, PUD utility pole that couldn't be moved. Uh, up in this area, so we ended up having to make that a one-way. We did work with both of the business owners in that area, and actually uh, both of them were okay with the change uh, to that intersection. Yes, sir. So I guess this is the final design now. So I'm interested on, I have to own a couple of rentals on there. I guess it would be the Southwest. Be this area over here? Right. Okay. Will there be any problems or encroachment or anything on that property? No. The other thing that we did not want to do with this project was try to take any right-of-way or any private property, acquire any, uh, any real estate. Uh, and we, did, we were able to accomplish that with this project and we did not need any uh, private property. We were able to fit all of these. Uh, noise barriers put up or anything for the residences? No. No. And it shouldn't be, uh, it, that intersection other than the, the change in the traffic control should not change uh, as far as noise goes. Um, but yeah, we fit it within the right of way and that was uh, an objective of ours and, and we ended up getting there with this roundabout. So we were pretty happy with it. Yes? How are pedestrians going to cross without getting hit? So if you see, uh, actually one major uh, safety, aspects of, safety aspect of roundabouts is walkability. So this crosswalk here, it not only uh, shortens this distance uh, across the street, but also gives a center uh, protected area that they could actually stop uh, before actually crossing the rest of the way. It also slows traffic when you come into the roundabout. So if you notice how you would be coming up the street, you have to veer to the left before you actually enter and go around to the right. It slows traffic. Uh, and actually increases walkability uh, and shortens these distances uh, across this crosswalk. So one of the major safety aspects of a roundabout. And then once again, we would like to thank uh, all of our partners. Uh, they have been wonderful to work with, uh, had some great ideas and a ton of financial help uh, from Mason Conservation District, uh, PUD3, and uh, Mason Transit Authority. So would like to have a uh, huge thanks to uh, all of those agencies uh, with the design and the help of the construction of this project. Yes? I'm just curious, is there still going to be the privacy fence on the one behind the There is. Up and down the entire uh, hill section there is a, the, the slatted privacy, privacy fence will be installed. Okay, yes. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the final design for Downtown Connector. Like I said, uh, construction started yesterday and will continue. It is a 
250 day construction period. Uh, so uh, almost a year construction period. We don't know if they'll need all of that. Uh, Wanch Construction was our low bidder uh, and they are fairly aggressive. They've got quite a few crews uh, out there working and they hope to get this done uh, in fairly short order. So we'll see if they're able to accomplish that. We're, uh, we're hopeful that they will be able to do that. Uh, stay on schedule uh, for this project. Yes. So Turner, uh, well, Basin 3's been uh, under construction for about a month now. Uh, they've finished up, up on the Northcliff development and have moved downtown. Uh, so they are working with uh, the downtown connector project uh, contractor, and they're about the same time frame. They had about a 300-day construction period with Basin 3, is that correct, guys? Yeah. So about 300 days with Basin 3, they did have quite a bit of a jump on downtown connectors. So thinking that they're both going to end up about the same time, uh, sometime next spring or summer, uh, is when we anticipate them being done. Turner Street uh, has been awarded also. They are going to, they've indicated that they're going to start construction sometime in July or August. Yeah, July 9th right now is the projected start date. That whole project will probably take them two weeks, maybe three. It's a really quick run and repay, so we'll be in and out of there quick. And then also we've got uh, about 20, a little over 20 residential blocks going uh, late this summer also. So uh, in a lot of these areas, you'll see some new pavement on the ground in the residential streets uh, also. Um, and Basin 3 is also getting uh, new pavement for the entire project. So everything north downtown Shelton from uh, Alder Street uh, back to uh, Henry, thank you, uh, Henry Street uh, at, the, at the toe of the hill and then all of the Northcliffe development will all have brand new asphalt um, on the ground. So uh, pretty excited for having that all of north downtown Shelton repaved and then 20 residential blocks. Yes? Okay, for that uh, area, What about the sidewalks? Some of those sidewalks are really sad shape. Sorry, I missed the first part of that. The sidewalks. What about the sidewalks? The In what area? Blacktop, Alder North. Alder North has been an issue. Um, we have heard that from quite a few. Uh, that is a fairly major project uh, to replace those. Uh, and at this point, unfortunately, we can't replace sidewalks or ADA ramps. Uh, in that area, we are looking at some grant funding to possibly do that. And luckily, the paving most likely downtown uh, in Basin 3 won't be done until next spring or summer. So it does give us a little bit of time, but that has been an issue for us. But sidewalks and ADA ramps are fairly expensive, uh, and it was not something that was able to be fit into this project, unfortunately. Yes. Really important question. Where are all the horses going to be on Saturday morning with seven and Franklin all tied up? Uh, we will be. They must have a location identified. I, I, I hope they do. I don't know for sure, but I hope they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, one person that I did forget to mention, uh, Brooke Kilt, um, also has our comment cards here in the back. Uh, Brett Armstrong is also here tonight, uh, our superintendent of uh, sewer and storm. So if you do have any questions for them, feel free to ask, but uh, certainly fill out a comment card if you didn't get your question answered tonight. Uh, and if there are no more questions, we will conclude. Yes. What are you going to do about keeping people up to date of where you're working for these projects? Thank you for bringing that up. That was something that I missed. Um, I'm surprised somebody didn't yell at me here. That was one major point we wanted to make sure we got across tonight, and I was completely spaced on it. So city website, uh, also city Facebook. Uh, we are giving updates uh, on a weekly basis, so every Friday those updates are going to be going out. We also will be getting to uh, iFiber to make sure that we get on the radio and make sure everybody understands uh, where we're at with the project and also our council meetings, uh, updating uh, the council on the progress. But yes, on a weekly basis, those will be going out on Friday afternoons for the next week to follow. 
And if anything changes with that, we will be giving updates uh, on a daily basis. We just had a change uh, to the schedule for the rest of this week. Uh, the contractor was moving a little quicker than we anticipated, so we didn't anticipate them getting up around the 6th and 7th Street area and uh, west of that. So we are actually doing an update tomorrow. So um, all of the city of Shelton uh, outlets that we have, uh, we will certainly be getting the word out on all of those. So thank you for bringing that up. Yes. of 8th Street and the connector project or the, the library? Whole connector project, yeah. The whole connector I mean, project? You know, some of the pictures from tonight of what the streets are going to look like, what the rain part is going to look like. Do you have that? In the I can certainly, this, this uh, presentation will be posted on the city website also. Okay. So anybody that has questions, you can certainly direct them to the city of Shelton website. Yeah. And we have a project, uh, projects page that does give you updates on all of our projects from Basin 3 downtown connector and the Turner Street project. So uh, all of those projects, and I'm sure moving forward with some of the renovations that we've actually got going at the library, um, I'm sure we'll give updates on also. Any other questions? Well, thank you for coming tonight. And I apologize uh, for all of the inconvenience out there and the construction, but uh, I hope that all of you are as excited as we are uh, at the city of Shelton to have this project. And I know it is going to be a rough next 12 months uh, for traffic out there and uh, pedestrians. Uh, but we ask that you be patient with our contractors out there and let them get their work done so that we can get the best project uh, that we can possibly have. Thanks again for coming. <laughs>